All right, peace and blessings, everybody. Rob YB Youngblood. I'm going live in my personal Facebook group because uh, it's where I had the most active people. And so I am grateful uh, and excited. What? Oh, I'm grateful and excited about the opportunity to come before you uh, with another session of the Confidence Builder, which is an effort connected to the Collaboration Creates Currency movement. And uh, the second session was actually on my YB Connects uh, page on Facebook. So if you want to catch that, go over to YB Connects. And then session number one was actually on YouTube. And so just testing some things out because the Collaboration Creates Currency movement, the focus, uh, uh, the mission actually, is to impact 100,000 lives in 2024. Many of you may have seen those posts that I've put out uh, since the beginning of the year. Uh, and I realized that w what better way to impact people than to come to a uh, natural network, which is my personal page. So this is public, uh, so feel free to share this out. But what I've done over the last two sessions is I've shared excerpts uh, from the copy of The Magic of Thinking Big. And this, this is mutually beneficial, right? So it's not just an opportunity for me to empower, inspire, and impact you, but it's also an opportunity for me uh, to get in some reading uh, to develop myself and to continue to work on my public speaking skills. Now, some of you may or may not know, but I've been speaking professionally since 2004. Uh, that's uh, that's nearly 20 years. Uh, I remember uh, I stopped. Uh, well, I graduated from Virginia Union University, the greatest HBCU in the nation. And now, if you want to argue with me, go get a mirror and argue with yourself. Don't argue with me about that. But when I graduated from the greatest HBCU in the nation. Uh, I uh, didn't have any prospects for full-time work, and I had a fraternity brother uh, approach me about an opportunity to become an entrepreneur, and that was one of the greatest uh, pieces of, of information. It was the greatest outreach. It was the greatest impact of my life at that time, and it opened up the door for me to develop my communication skills by doing presentations in homes and dens and living rooms and uh, you know, libraries all over the place. And so I began to speak uh, professionally. And then I started working for a nonprofit organization here in Richmond, Virginia, which put me in a position to go to schools all across Central Virginia. Uh, I would deliver character and career uh, education lesson plans uh, in elementary, middle, high schools, all up and down 64, I-64, I-95, 360, for those of you who are familiar with the Central Virginia area. And then one day, one of the teachers invited me to her church. She invited me to her church to speak to a group of young men because she knew that my father was murdered when I was two and that she, she thought that I could possibly relate to some of these young men. And I came in with a good friend of mine at the time, Howard Parrish, and uh, we sat down and we talked to these young men and we just shared our stories, shared our lives, answered, answered questions. And after we were done, she slid me an envelope. She slid me an envelope. Now, for those of you who grew up in the Baptist church, you know that when they slide you an envelope, it's a, it's a little something in there, right? Now, you don't know how much it is, but it's a little something in there. So I didn't open up the envelope until I got to my car because I didn't want to embarrass her, nor did I want to embarrass me. Uh, but when I got to my car and opened up that envelope, it was $250 in the envelope. And my speaking career officially began at that time. And so since then, I've had the chance to uh, get on various stages, uh, speak at various conferences, you know, go into organizations, associations to share not only my story of how I've had to overcome adversity, but to teach people how to leverage tools like LinkedIn to increase their influence, impact, and income. And now I'm at a place now with the Collaboration Creates Currency Movement where I am positioned to impact 100,000 lives through my speaking, through my books through my coaching, through my consulting. So this is not about me. This is about an opportunity for you to enhance your confidence through hearing. All right? Uh, the Bible says that faith comes through hearing, hearing from the Word of God. Now, I'm not sharing the Word of God today, but I am sharing some insight and information that could lead you to the source, to the creator, to the, to the manufacturer of your gifts, talents, and abilities. And I pray that anything that I say will, will, will pierce your heart in such a way that you'll take actions to overcome fear because that was the first uh, part of this book collaboration crazy excuse me this book of the magic of thinking big by david schwartz 
it talked about the importance of thinking and having belief. But today I'm going to touch on cure yourself of excuse-itis, the failure disease. Now, when I promote this book to people, I always tell folks that there's a mind disease that we all have. Right? There's a mind disease that we all have. And that mind disease uh, uh, will cause your mind to die. Right? We all have it. But there's a cure. And you're going to hear about it in this book. So I'm going to give it to you in about uh, about three minutes. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'll be back tomorrow with more of the uh, Confidence Builder session number four. But for today, people, as you think yourself to success, that's what you will study. People. You will study people very carefully to discover, then apply, success rewarding principles to your life and you want to begin right away. Go deep into your study of people and you'll discover unsuccessful people suffer a mind-deadening thought disease in its advanced form. And most average people have at least a mild case of it. You will discover that excusitis explains the difference between the person who is going places and the fellow who is barely holding his own. You will find that the more successful the individual, the less inclined he is to make excuses. But the fellow who has gone nowhere, has no plans for getting anywhere, always has a book full of reasons to explain why. Persons with mediocre accomplishments are quick to explain why they haven't, why they don't, why they can't, why they aren't. Study the lives of successful people and you'll discover this. All the excuses made by the mediocre fellow could be, but aren't, made by the successful person. I've never met nor heard of a highly successful business executive, military officer, salesman, professional persons, or leader in any field who could not have found one or more major excuses to hide behind. Roosevelt could have hidden behind his lifeless legs. Truman could have used his no college education. Kennedy could have said, I'm too young to be president. Johnson and Eisenhower could have ducked behind heart attacks. Like any disease, excusitis gets worse if it isn't treated properly. A victim of this thought disease goes through this mental process. I'm not doing as well as I should. What can I use as an alibi that will help me save face? Ah, let's see. Poor health. Lack of education, too old, too young, bad luck, personal misfortune, wife, the way my family brought me up. Once the victim of this failure disease has selected a good excuse, he sticks with it. Then he relies on the excuse to explain to himself and others why he is not going forward. And each time the victim makes the excuse, the excuse becomes embedded deeper within his or her subconsciousness. Thoughts, positive or negative, grow stronger when fertilized with constant repetition. At first, the victim of excusitis knows his alibi is more or less a lie. But the more frequently he or she repeats it, the more convinced they become that it is completely true, that the alibi is the real reason for his or her not being the success they should be. Procedure one, in your thought individual program of thinking yourself to success must be, a, must be to vaccinate yourself against excusitis, the disease of the failures. I'm going to pause here for this session to let you digest that. But ask yourself, are you using an alibi 
for the reason why you're not succeeding? Are you giving yourself all of the excuses and the reasons why you can't do what other people are doing? Are you presenting uh, facts in your mind that you think are facts for why you can't move on to become who God has called you to be? If the answer is yes, you're suffering from excusitis. Now, here's the reality. We all suffer from a case of excusitis. The, 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 the difference between those who succeed of the and those who fail or those who succeed and those who are mediocre is that those who succeed, they understand that they have these excuses, but they make a reason to overcome them anyway. So you see, if you want to build your confidence, the first thing you need to do is you got to have clarity. But then the second thing you have to do is you have to acknowledge the fact that you could make excuses, but you choose to move forward to accomplish those things that you need to accomplish anyway. Your confidence will grow as you overcome excusitis. So I want to encourage you, if you have not had a chance to read this book, The Magic of Thinking Big, I don't get anything from it, from you reading it, but the fact that you're impacted. But when you get you get your chance to read this book, you will find insight and information that will change your life in a major way. In, uh, in the next session, tomorrow morning, I will bring you additional information on how you can vaccinate yourself from this thought deadening disease that's called excusitis. Listen, come to the uh, Collaboration Creates Currency movement on, uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to visit me on LinkedIn, uh, the Collaboration Creates Currency movement. You can visit me at the Collaboration Creates Currency movement.com so you can learn more about this movement and what we're striving to do. And currently, for the month of April, with April being financially, Financial Literacy Month, uh, we are looking to empower 5,000 participants, 5,000 participants to develop financial literacy, but in a way that's a little different than you might think. The focus is not on assets and liabilities, debits, credits. Uh, income or, 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 or uh, revenue or uh, expenses. It's about learning how to develop your relationships that become an asset and open the door for you to develop a wealth consciousness so that you can become financially independent, wealthy, and free. Make sure you join me tomorrow for the Confidence Builder series where I'll share some more insight and information that will empower, inspire, and impact you to live out your God-given purpose. Be encouraged, be blessed, but keep the faith. And most of all, remember that your gift will make room for you. We'll see you on the next session tomorrow morning. Peace.